Over the last few years, the style of speed fun has become a lot less popular to map in. And we used to have speed fun maps more often, like here's one from 2021. 2021 was kind of like the peak of like a lot of these being built and released. And honestly, most of them weren't even that good. There were a lot of like rather scuffed things about them. But to be honest, that was kind of part of what made the style fun is the like random weird nonsense that would happen on the tracks. And because like a lot of the time, uh, like you'll see on this track, it's a lot of just like smooth rolling turns and very few transitions. And that kind of gets somewhat boring to, I would say, most people, but I don't know. I still enjoyed this track. As you can see, I have 12th World and it was track of the day. But really, uh, you can go a lot further and make cooler tracks. And I kind of want to show that because recently Rexasaurus uploaded a track to Trackmean Exchange that is a lot better than a lot of these old ones and a lot of the more recent ones too because it is a lot more transitional. I think the combination of speed and jumps is really what makes uh, a lot of these tracks interesting because it adds a lot of like more weird stuff that you have to do and you have to like plan your lines around the jumps and things rather than just like going very slowly around the apexes, right? So here we can see that like there's a lot of jumps in the middle of turns, and you can't really do this on most tracks, but it works pretty well when you're going faster on these off-road surfaces, right? And like this wall ride, it's kind of jank. You have to enter wide in order to get the good line on it, but it kind of works because it just adds something that uh, you can actually screw up. And it kind of adds some amount of difficulty to the track, even though it's like kind of weird and jank. So if you are currently looking to build faster tracks, I would suggest that you make an attempt to build more jumps. And I know this is like me being transitional map nerd asking you guys to build transitional, but I really do think that's a lot of why this track is fun. You're going between the surfaces sometimes, you're going between uh, jumps and things, right? So if we take a look at some of the other more popular maps from the past, like even Viridescent. Viridescent, like, was like the main speed fun grass map for a long time. And I know some people still really like it. I don't know like how it holds up to other tracks that have been released over the years, but I still think it's pretty good. And Airboon Shadow hunted it long after track of the day, which is quite cool. But you can see that it has a lot of these um, random jumps, and you'll see this one coming up. It actually impacts the line of how you drive the track. Like, you actually have to risk the jump in order to change your line and keep going. Some of these jumps are mostly just like you kind of go over them straight, and then it works. But some of them aren't. Like, I'll let the, I'll let the track play out here. This one, not this one, this one basically does nothing, but this one you actually have to kind of get the correct line over it to reduce their time and get a good entry to the next turn. And this was an extremely popular map, right? Let's go to another extremely popular map, Valkyria by Saffron. This is another one that's in like a bit of a different style, I would say, but it was also very, very well-liked map at the time and also rather scuffed at parts, but... You can see we start off with some transitions that you have to risk. And another thing that I would like to point out is just like transitions can make a lot of this stuff more interesting, the having actual features, like on full speed, a feature is basically any part of the track where you're going into a vertical position, whether it's sideways or upside down. Basically, think a loop, wall ride, tube any kind of twisty bullshit, uh, those are called features. And I think these speed fun maps could benefit a lot from them in some cases. Obviously, because most of the speed fun maps are slower than the FS maps, uh, you kind of need to build your features accordingly. 
So they have to be rather uh, short or with reactor or something. And actually you have to turn around them, right? But I think it adds like uh, some amount of variation to actually driving the track. And now another track that I would like to point out is a map that I made not that long ago, like about a year ago, which is Biscuit. And this track, uh, I was basically trying to make a more challenging grass track. And I think it succeeded. Um, and you can see that there's going to be like a, a couple features on this track. A good amount of jumps. Could honestly even have more jumps. Like the Rexosaurus map had more jumps and about as many features. So by that metric it uh, is maybe... Uh, more what I'm suggesting. But the other thing is, uh, another thing to look out for on these uh, grass tracks is that switching the direction of your turn and timing that can be a... it adds like another point of skill in the turn, right? So most of the time you're just trying to hit the apex and then hit the exit, right? But having this direction change in the middle of the grass turn is a good way of having an extra point where you actually have to time an input, right? So having more stuff like that rather than just doing wide sweeping turn, wide sweeping turn, wide sweeping turn can help a lot when it comes to making the map have more variety within the turns and not just being all like, I guess I can pull up another example. We'll go to uh, Artemis, and this is going to be similar to... Uh, Vitality, the first map that I showed. It's by one of the same mappers. Um, but you'll see here, it is kind of transitional, which is uh, good. But it's going to be uh, a lot of these long sweeping turns. Even more so than uh, Viridescent. I'd say Viridescent is like kind of on the edge of how straight you want your map to be. Actually, there's probably an even better example than this track, which is um, uh, Rorvik. I can pull that one up after. But you can kind of see how the difference in style between this and the Rex track. And it's partially because it's faster. But if you ask yourself why it's faster, it's because the turns are straighter. Let's open up Rorvik. Here's Rorvik, another fairly straight line map, and this is going to be like very very clear it does have uh, some amount of jumps which is good but you'll see a lot of the time you're spending in these uh, SD angles just like very slight turning which is a style in itself but I'm not sure that's really where you want to be with these maps, at least in my opinion. And for another example of what not to do, here is a track of the day from 2023. which has almost no transitions and is all just like these sweeping turns. I think there's only like one jump in the entire map and one road part here. Oh, there's a second road part as well, but here comes the jump. If I recall, this jump wasn't very good because of the way it goes into the turn, but that's besides the point. Now, I want to just uh, show the Rex track again to kind of... Uh, the main point of this video was to draw a contrast between different kinds of these uh, speedfun maps. Because if you're going to be building in this style, 
I do think that uh, you need to be going in more in this direction, in my opinion, if you want to have an interesting track that is uh, fun to drive. But that is just my opinion. You could think about this in terms of uh, input density, right? Like how often are you entering a new turn or jump or surface where you need to be doing a different kind of input rather than just continuing with your smooth steer in one direction. On full speed, there is a common opinion from basically all good players almost that having longer SDs and turns is a lot worse, at least for competition and maps that are fun to play at a high level, that you really want shorter SDs instead of longer SDs. And the main reason for this is just that long turns have you have to do you still have to absolutely do inputs during them because you still want to have like the optimal line but there isn't as much to do over the course of a track it feels like there the, a smaller track is being dragged out over to a longer time frame in a way and there's less to actually do during it and having more to do is kind of uh it makes a lot of sense in a context where you're trying to play a 40 second track in a racing game uh, over and over until you get the perfect run, right? Of course, my perspective is somewhat try-hard because I am relatively good at the game and I'm sure like a lot of these uh, more wider rolling turn tracks are a lot more appealing to newer players because there's uh, less you have to focus on. but. This style has really gotten a reputation for being very boring and disliked by good players because the they'll, they'll always be like, oh, grass is boring, whatever. Most often they'll be in the context of fast grass tracks that they'll say like, oh, it's just boring. And it's like, yes, the way they are built is boring, but there's nothing intrinsic to the style that makes... Uh, these fast off-road platform maps boring. It is and easy. What makes them easy is how they are built, right? They can be made harder. It's just people choose not to. And I think there definitely is an audience for maps like this one. And as you can see, like, this was just made for Alamo Cup, right? And the records are, like, a good amount of people played this track. People like this track, right? So... If you are a mapper, I would encourage you to at least giving a try, if you like these faster maps, giving a try at making a bit more transitional, a bit more heavy on features and things, and I guess in a way taking some uh, inspiration from practices that are considered to be good for making more uh, engaging and difficult full speed tracks onto these non-FS maps. And I know I'm going to get somebody complaining about, like, ah, oh, you're using the word full speed wrong. But, like, I don't care. You know what I mean. And if you don't, you're probably not a mapper that is going to make a good track anyway. Got him. One more suggestion that I have as uh, a thing to try would be building features where you actually have to turn on speed fun, right? So you can't really do this on FS because of the conventions of the style, but... You can drive basically full speed features in the opposite way that they're meant to be driven on FS and in order to create turns within them. And I made a track a while back that was kind of experimenting with this, but I never finished it. Um, so there's another kind of idea for you if you want to try uh, something else that hasn't really been done much.